Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about solving a general quadratic equation, modulo p. So this will be something like the quadratic formula, modulo p. So I just want to recall what a quadratic residue is. So if we have a and n are uh, integers, n is a natural number, and they're relatively prime, then we say that a is a quadratic residue modulo n, if x squared is congruent to a mod n has a solution. Otherwise, it's called a quadratic non-residue. So uh, what we want is, for this setup, we want p to be um, an odd prime, and we want p not to divide a number a, and what we want to look at is solving this equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, congruent to 0 mod p. And like I said, this is kind of a general um, quadratic equation, so we'll get something that uh, approximates the quadratic formula modulo p. So what we're going to start with is um, moving the c over. So that's going to give us ax squared plus bx is congruent to negative c mod p. And then the next thing that we're going to do is multiply by 4a. So multiply by 4a. So let's see what that gives us. That gives us 4a squared x squared plus 4bc is congruent to negative 4a, sorry, 4abx is congruent to negative 4ac mod p. Okay, so we've got something like that. Now notice we have got negative 4ac, so that's a term in the quadratic formula, so it's shaping up. Now the next thing that we want to do is add something to both sides. We'll add b squared to both sides. Great. And so that's going to give us 4a squared x squared plus 4abx plus b squared is congruent to b squared minus 4ac. And then we have this is mod p. But now notice, we can factor the left-hand side here. So let's do that. So factor the left-hand side. And that gives us 2ax plus b, all squared. So notice, that's how the left-hand side factors. And now this is congruent to b squared minus 4ac. Um, <coughs> mod p. So now we've got it in the form of a linear term squared is congruent to something else. So this has a solution um, if and only if uh, b squared minus 4ac is a quadratic residue. Or P divides b squared minus 4ac. So if p divides b squared minus 4ac, then obviously the right-hand side of this is 0, and that gives you a single solution when this is 0. And if it's a quadratic residue, then by a previous um, <coughs> proposition, we know that this will have two solutions. So now we know exactly when this is solvable. So notice it has something to do with like the discriminant, and it looks like a little bit we're working over the real numbers here, except we're talking about quadratic residues instead of um, negatives or positives under the square root. Okay, good. I'm going to clean up this board, and then um, we're going to look at an example of this. Okay, so now we're going to look at this example. So we have x squared plus 3x minus 5 is congruent to 0 mod 7. So obviously, since 7 is a small prime, we could guess and check to see if we had solutions. Um, but we won't do that. We'll use our um, strategy that was outlined on the last board. So using this strategy that was outlined um, before, we can transform this equation into the following equation. So this will be 2x squared squared plus 3, sorry, 2x plus 3, the quantity squared, is congruent to 1 mod 7. 
So you can check that's the same. Notice here we get 2x squared plus 12x plus 9. You can move the 1 over and then everything uh, checks out. So I'll leave it to you uh, to check that, but these are equivalent equations. Okay, so now we notice that one is a quadratic re residue. In fact, one squared is congruent to one and six squared is 36, which is congruent to one. So that means we get two solutions to this equation. We get 2x plus 3 is congruent to 1 mod 7, or 2x plus 3 is congruent to 6 mod 7. Okay, good. Now what we can do is move the 3 over, so we get 2x is congruent to negative 1 mod 7, sorry, negative 2 mod 7, but now uh, it's obvious that this makes x congruent to negative 1 mod 7, or maybe better yet, x is congruent to 6 mod 7. So there we go. That's one solution. Now the next one we can get from this, so this will give us 2x is congruent to 3 mod 7. And now we have to actually like multiply by um, the inverse. So notice the inverse of 2 mod 7 is 4. And so that's because 2 times 4 is 8. And 8 is uh, congruent to 1 mod 7. So we'll multiply both sides of this equation by 4. That will give us x is congruent to 12 mod 7. But now 12 is congruent to 5 mod 7. So we have x is congruent to 5 mod 7. So there we have our two solutions to this original um, equivalence. And we use this method uh, involving quadratic residues um, and something like a modular um, quadratic formula. Okay, this is the end of the example.